So we're going to go over chapters 14 and 16, the R packages book. And I use um, external data a lot in my packages slash shiny applications um, because I like to get the data process first uh, before it goes to the application. So I'm constantly downloading new data and processing it and then sending it up for um, so the data is ready in the package, so to speak. So I felt this would be a good uh, chapter for me to present. So here we go. There are three main ways to include data in a package. Um, you put it under the exported data and a folder in your R package structure. And to document how you create the data set, if you're creating it, is to use data raw uh, with use this, and that will open up a fold or a file where you can create um, the scripts to create the data. And then you use, use this again, use data, and then that will uh, create an RD file or RDA file um, that can be used in the package. And that allows other people to use the data and to access the data. And you can also use that as an example data set to use with your functions. The other type of, um, you can use internal data and that is for, um, I think mainly to be used um, if you want to use some functions and you don't want the user to have access to that data. Like you have the example was in the book, pre-computed um, tables um, that you're working with that the function needs uh, to operate, then um, that's a good option for you uh, to use. And And you can also, whoops, didn't mean to go there. Um, you can also use the, um, if you wanna give access to the user um, of the raw data, you can put it under the INST folder and an extra data folder, and you can load it with system file. Um, a note that they had in the um, book was, uh, that if you want to submit to CRAN, your um, package has to be less or smaller than a megabyte, and you'd have to fight if and argue your case if it's going to be more than that. Um, there are some tools here um, to check to help you find the best way to compress your data down uh, to get within that limit if you need to. Uh, so it optimizes compression. Uh, for package data. And then it's okay to put some data in the test directory, but limit it um, because that's meant for uh, testing the functions, not necessarily the data. And it looks like I forgot to complete my sentence, uh, but it's okay to put some data in the vignette uh, folder as well. If you want to give an example of uh, test cases um, that you're uh, vignette needs uh, to run, so to speak. Um, they talk about lazy data, and if you use use this, this will default in your description file. Um, but lazy data, when you use this, use package, it defaults to putting defining your data as lazy data. That means it isn't loaded, and it's not the computer isn't using memory until you de declare it. And so you declare lazy data in your description file. But it is, like I said, it doesn't count against your, he had really had an exercise where he's, or who, the authors had a, a example of using um, the New York flights um, example of, you know, when you load the data, um, how it impacts memory. Documenting your data. 
you need to document your data. And suggestion is to use Roxygen 2 to document a data set in your package. And when I get through going through these slides, I'll just go through a package I'm working on and just kind of walk you through the process. There's a different way to do it. When I first started doing packages, I would just write it from scratch. And there's a much simpler way to do it. Because if you use the, if you go to file, new file, our documentation, it gives you a nice template to work from rather than having to write all that um, infrastructure out. Um, you can also use the function from the tools. I think it's already preloaded. Prompt data function uh, can work as well, give you a nice template um, because the use format perf um, does a nice um, breakdown of the character types, kind of like a uh, when you do a stir function, um, the structure, it labels each variable as a, you know, is it a character, is it numeric, uh, it breaks that down. And then I also like using source to provide details of where you got the data. I also like putting, I have one package where I have so much data um, I try to put what file also created that um, data set as well. Uh, you say a file um, as an, an external data source? Oh. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Because, yeah, I mean, a lot of times you're going to get it maybe from a website or some other source, but sometimes I have a script that creates another file. <laughs> I'm using okay, I yeah. document that. That's what I'm referring to. And then I have to sometimes remember where that, <laughs> how did this get created? <laughs> <laughs> Who created this monster? <laughs> so nice. <laughs> um, chapter 16, um, the ins folder. Um, I thought this was important. It is copied to the top level directory of your package. Um, so, you know, they pointed out that it's the opposite of when you want to hide files uh, for package compliance. Um, but you do have to be careful about the naming of the subdirectory. Uh, you wouldn't want to use, for instance, in test would be bad. Um, because that would conflict with another folder in your package, most likely, if you had a testing folder. Um, common files found in this uh, folder are information about the author, citation, copyright. Um, and I'll jump a little bit, but you can also use when you use another language. If you have to use another language, it is uh, discouraged a Bit because it just creates another dependency, uh, but you can, uh, but you'd put some Python JavaScripts in there. And there are some more detail about dealing with Java files if you have to. Um, the, this folder is also helpful for um, citation, uh, how you want your package to be cited and um, creating, um, if you want to create a bib um, um, file as well, or, you know, if you're citing other packages. So, so recognize that there are other Yeah, and just there's, um, you know, when you go to um, other packages, you know, you can explore and see what's in there. <laughs> and there's um, um, other options you may find in there. And I'm going to stop for a bit. I just want to show you the, um, I'll show you a, another screen. I'm going to go out.
be right there. So like I was talking about, this is a package I've been, it's actually a shiny app, but I'm going to make it into a pack or it is a package, so to speak, but I need to clean it up the package part. But if I want to create a documented data set, let me start. You could just write an R script and try to um, list these um, uh, parameters for documenting your data set. But I find it's this, if you go to new file, oops. And then go to R documentation. It gives you an option to either document a function or a data set. And so let me see. Well, let me let me go back. I can't remember the name of my data set. This is my uh, data set file that I was talking about. Use data, use uh, data raw. That created this. So I have my data. And I want to do this. So that's the script to get my list. So I want to document profile data. So I'm going to go to new. Our documentation. Document the data set. And go to profile data. So now I have a template to fill out. Rather than having to remember all these different options. And this is what I was talking about earlier. It, this is a list of 15. This is just a, the original data set was a nasty Excel sheet. It's, it's got 15 tabs. So I didn't want to create a, read a sheet for each uh, tab. So I just put it to a list. Um, but so I have this, so then I can just um, remember what type of, um, you know, You do kind of have to remember what the data source is in there for each uh, element. But it gives you like, this is a character type that states basically um, and the number. It breaks it down nicely. So you don't have to fill that in yourself. <laughs> then right here, I would give myself a little bit more detail what this data source is. And then I'd put in the source, put that um, website that I had my data set. I can just put that there. So speak. Um, references and it breaks down your um, gives you some examples keywords provides a nice structure and like I said I use this all all the time and when you refresh the data it updates too so that makes documenting a little bit easier uh, to do for your data sets so I'm going to preview it. I should have saved it. And then right there. This would look a little bit nicer if it was in a, a typical data frame. This looks a little 
crazy. <laughs> Probably because it's a list, but typically like a, a more typical data frame, it's a bit nicer um, output. Are there any questions? Yeah, I'm actually trying to follow, trying something myself here. And um, um, how exactly, you, you said that this, uh, this is actually like the, the STR output, it's automatically updated. Mm -hmm. No, you, you have to paste it again when you- No, no, you it'll change. update, it'll update. If okay. You have nice. a, it'll give you kind of the breakdown. Like, let's say, yeah. uh, wish I had a better. You know, the tibble ten times two. You know, the 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 dimensions will update automatically. Uh, nice. Yeah, it's, it's actually a pretty good feature. <laughs> and it is rather than having to constantly. The, you know, you know, if you can choose the, the back end that's used, it, like for example, if you don't want to use this the, the STR function, if you can use another function that that describes it. Glimpse. Um, not sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, yeah. If if it if it's able to to change the which function is used to print the, this 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 output. I was trying to find it. But yeah, okay, I, I will search for that. <laughs> But it's pretty cool. <laughs> so, uh, Kev Kevin, how do you link your the data that you want to document so that it can automatically um, give this output? Because it knows um, when I did the new file, our documentation. Do you see a pop up? Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. So data set. So I'm naming the data set. So when that data set gets updated, it knows that it's going to update um, the documentation in here, so to speak. So, okay, so, so the like data then has to be other. So you're just referencing, you're making a link um, with the profile data. You're making a link um, to the RD file because it recognizes Let's see, let me move. So the data set has yeah, to be in the environment, right? Yeah. Yeah, you have to be in the, right. you need the object, right? Yeah, you need the object. That's All right, the, that's clear. So right here, so I'd already saved well, that. Well, on, All Kevin, right. on Kevin workflow, what he did was using the use hmm. data, uh, and I use this use data function. Yep. With the the data set in your environment, in your global environment, during the development. Yeah, and let's see. Let's see. So I kind of let's see right here. So profiles. I already kind of have a the Excel. I grab the Excel sheet. I download download it. I read it, that's just giving me the spreadsheet file and that just, on that defaults, that P2019, that just defaults to the first sheet. So it's not very useful. But what I do here is I do a use per to read all the sheets and skip the first two lines to get the data. And then I use this, use data, profile data, overwrite if I ever, if it ever changes or want to update. So that's true. That's creating the data object. And now, you know, after you do that, then you document your data set. So now you have a link um, with your documentation. So um, like this data set isn't going to change until they get a new data set but I get new data in all the time on my other projects. It's constantly coming in. And so my RD files, because I have it linked to a data object, it updates the dimensions all the time. Like 
the structure is really the same. Um, it's the same structured data, but if you made a new object, deleted it and made it again, you know, it capture um, that data, so to speak, that new structure, so to speak, but it'll always update the dimensions, which is super helpful for your um, documentation. Yeah, for sure. For, for an object like yours, if you had to document it manually, it would be uh, especially updating the documentation. Yeah, it's super and, um, it, and, and actually, this, this script that, that generates the date and, and update the date, you are maintaining it in the data row folder? Yes. Or where you where, where you yeah, you're on the data row? Okay, yeah. yeah. Let's go data, data raw. Right there. And then my data sets. Nice. And, and the right images were just to get for the shiny contest. <laughs> You have to put like I put it to a thumbnail image of the app, so that was the nice. script it's to write that. I always cool. forget how to do it. You you, you see a lot of a lot That's of examples example. without thumbnails, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and up here was just the example of how to do it, so I always have to have the. Yeah, because if you follow down here, I started writing an object for each sheet, and I was like, ah, I don't want to spend that much time doing that. So. Yeah, I, I would also you uh, use the, um, address that um, they. I actually use the they use the data raw folder a lot for this kind of scripts that you don't really don't really want to be in the package or it's just something that you are trying. Maybe if, if you are trying something before writing the functions, you can write it in the data hall folder and then, and then if it's going to be actually code for the package, you throw it in the, in the R file after. Yeah. I just, you know, my limitation, so to speak, is I never share <laughs> packages. So it's just me <laughs> If I'm, um, you know, I'm just. It's for your future self. It's more for my future self. But let me tell you, yeah, I, had, I, I had where my laptop crashed and, um, you know, I did not uh, push up all the, how I created data sets. <laughs> and it was right during, like right after COVID, I had to like re- Repivot, you know, pivot to like a different process, and I had to write all these scripts, and I didn't uh, push. And so when I downloaded, I created like a virtual machine, <laughs> and uh, I had to remember how I how I did something. It was awful. It was a lesson learned. <laughs> push, push. <laughs> yeah, and 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 actually. Um... Um, for for this kind of data set that you, you are not sure if it's going to to be maintained as as there, you could create a repository just for storing the data, your data, and actually linking your own repository as as the source, for example. Mm -hmm. It's also be more maintainable. <laughs> Anyone else have any um, good practices on documenting data sets? Yeah, I'm, I'm not that used to documenting data sets, but, I, but I, um, I, I'm actually had, having a lot of ideas right now. I, I need to, to try to implement. And um, also, I, I don't know if you already heard of, uh, there is also a data documentation format that, that's used elsewhere. There is the CSV, why? There is a CSV file mm -hmm. with an YAML header for, for the, like describing the documentation. And, and I have seen it used somewhere. I was thinking about so if there is something to convert from CSV, why to... To, to already to to the R format format would be would be useful. Um, let me show you. There's another way. 
you know, the last time I tried this, I used to do this. If you watch my, let's see if I remember how to do it. Data prompt. Is that my data prompt? Data prompt. Or the prompt data. I get it. Prompt. If you do prompt data, and you do was it? profile. I don't know if this will conflict because I already have a profile data. I don't know if I have to quote it. But sometimes I do it like that. Sometimes file. Let's see if it let's see if it worked. Yeah. That's another way to do it if you want to do it from the. Ah, see, this didn't give. Um... Yeah, see, that didn't break down the. Uh... It's already the RD file, right? Yeah. yeah, it didn't give me the, um, the uh, structure, like the format section. And I swear it used to do that. So I, I don't know. I could be mistaken. It's been a while since I've used that uh, function, but I used to use that, but I don't know if that gives you the format, but I like having the format uh, structure and I don't want to type all that out. So, but that's a, just another way to document your data set to Did anyone have any questions about the chapter or thought, there wasn't much, too much to dive into? Yeah, I, I, I would like to say, uh, especially for the part of the NIST folder, is it's actually really common to, I have seen already some mistakes that people do exactly with creating folders, like you said, like test, like a uh, part of, um, and it's really important to to understand that this th these folders would be copied to the root of your package when it's installed, when it's actually built, when it's and 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 you need to remember from the first session that I presented, there was the ca the chapter about the states of the package. It, it's it, in the state where you bundle your package. Is the state where your code, uh, everything, every file that is in the inst fo fo inst folder is copied to the root file. And it's also good to, to address the, the rbuildignore file, because the rbuildignore file, you can state some files that you don't actually want to be addressed, to be copied, even if it's in, in that folder. Just that. Yeah, that's because yeah. the other files will be converted to binary, right? And you don't want your no. Um, actually, not. It's just um, only the R functions would be converted to binary, and, and the other installed right. files, like the we, we are going to address the the compiled code also that that, that needs to be compiled. But actually, the R code becomes binary when installed. But it, it don't necessarily have has to do with the the inst files. Um, for example, uh, I'm I'm using right now a Linux machine. But on a Linux machine, you go to your home folder and enter your R. The the, the, uh, the directory where where your R R package are installed installed in Linux. It's like home slash R slash you know, slash R version, and you find all your packages there installed. You will see that the package that live in that folder will already have the, the structure that, that is built. So you, you will see that you, you will find the XG data folder already in the root, the, this kind of things. And especially if you're going to send your package to Chrome, they limit which, which folders can, can exist on, on the root of the package. You, you can't just create everything. That, that there is a topic in the extending, extending our book about that. Okay, let me go back 
I don't have any anything else <laughs> unless anyone has any questions or I tried to stretch that out as much as I could. <laughs> well, it doesn't have to fill the entire <laughs> I know. hour. I know. But yeah, that is a very nice trick about the templates. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually, there is also the 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 the, the mark, mark the our, our oxygen markdown format. I was cool, curious if uh, actually the documentation also support markdown. If you are using, have you already tried using markdown for documentation or of the data sets? I don't think it. I, I don't know. I, I don't think I've ever tried. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. <laughs> yeah, because it's it's actually less verbose than the yeah. Uh, yeah. It's it's LaTeX the the LaTeX format that is using. Yeah, because that's tough to work in in some. For, for, okay, for example, for for documenting functions, I have used it uh, sometimes, and and it. In in because actually for functions if you try to like like for data if you try to uh, describe a complex function or try to link some things with Markdown you can use HTML and like add figures or other other things in, in an easier way than than using than using LaTeX. Yeah, I want to yeah. search that for sure because I. Feel like there's yeah. been efforts to try to do that, but I'm not. I can't think of anything offhand. Yeah, because that would be really much more enjoyable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually, yeah. And maybe it's also easier to use the file elsewhere if if it's already written in Markdown. You can host your documentation in a GitHub page or something like that. Markdown is just the best. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, I send in the chat the, the yes. Markdown page of the Aroxian, but it actually don't refer anything about data. I will, I will have to try. <laughs> oh, I see. I think it's the base, same basic structure, right? As a function, I don't see why you couldn't. But I... yeah, I, I I can imagine that they like they use it for function. That there is a parser between the, between the Markdown and, and the later. Actually, uh, on the Pandoc pack and the Pandoc, it, it 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 converts for Markdown to to later. I, I think it's it's probably usable. <laughs> I'm just not sure how I, how I have to try. <laughs> but I wonder why this is not the norm. I mean, using Markdown. Because Markdown, it's kind of new. It's not that, that. It, it, it wasn't there when they created the R documentation. Or <laughs> that is true, yeah. It's a survival. And even, <laughs> and, and even when they, they wrote our oxygen, uh, things like that, like uh, eight, nine years ago, it, it, Markdown wasn't that, that used that can imagine. Because I have no idea when Markdown became, became used. But, but I know that's pre 
recent. But Thank if, if there is two, two trends, two trends that, that I see a lot in the technology world is that everything that that have have human readable text is moving to Mark now. And especially because you can mix like human readable with actually code. So Markdown is, 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 is the, the most used nowadays. And actually in the YAML files for anything that you have to describe things that like documentation, or not documentation, like a configuration, anything like that. And, and this is also something that in the R world is, is not that using, but I, in the future probably will be more, more tools that uses um, yeah, more files for configuration. You mean like JSON files? Yeah, actually, YAML is the evolution of JSON. It's the mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. the JSON for human humans, <laughs> yeah. human readers. <laughs> it's good for the <laughs> JSON is the format for machines to parse <laughs> and to sell in the internet. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. So JSON is not for human. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, it's not like um, easy to understand it just from the eye. And, you know, yeah, it's good, as you say, for he machines. <laughs> yeah, J J JSON is actually uh, light years ahead of XML. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, yeah, mom is, is nicer to use well, <laughs> after you get you get use it. <laughs> oh, XML. So, like, um, for, for example, for. Uh, Mikhail, that that's that that that's using uh, mostly like um, genomics, transcriptomics data. You could in incorporate some data sets on, on a package, for example, to like a, or, or a synthetic data set for tests or or uh, for, for a demo for your users to that is true. to try the package. Just and don't especially that, that part of documentation it's actually a good, good point too so you can really describe what what's everything on your data yeah definitely yeah. i think the major pain points of trying out a uh, new bioinformatics or statistics software is figuring out which kind of data the function actually accepts it's like the most painstaking um, aspect of trying out new things yeah Especially if it, it's not documented. <laughs> no, yeah. it's, it's just a nightmare. Yeah. It's, it's, I'm not as disappointed as I should be about documenting my data sets. Um, but once you have it done, it's so rewarding. Once you have that output, um, to be able to look it up is just uh, fabulous. I'm, I think this this is the 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 feeling for every, everything about document documentation, I guess, because yeah. I, I, I had the same feeling for functions and for any code that when you're documenting it, maybe you're just lazy and don't want to do that. But if, if you look at, at it one month later, you you'll be already grateful that you wrote the documentation. <laughs> yes. Yeah, for me, it's it's for plots um, primarily because sometimes I just uh, make a plots and then uh, make a lot of plots. And then when I want to come back to my uh, project and I see the plots and then I wonder like, what the hell did I do? What kind of data did I use? <laughs> and, you know, if I, yeah. sometimes Especially I do when create- When someone asks that to you, then when someone looks to your figure one month later and, oh, what, which data set you use? Why yeah, don't definitely. you change that, that column? <laughs> <laughs> definitely, yeah, yeah. And yeah, you know, I mean, for CSV files, there is this uh, CSV Y, but for plots, I guess it's just inherently possible. I don't know, is it possible to embed metadata 
maybe just one liner into a safe ggplot file, for example. I'm not sure. Maybe not. I I I I am I actually don't know if the if the ggplot object can can store that, but actually for um, you you can uh, for, for for any R object you can use the attributes function to add an attribute that can uh -huh. store a metadata or or something like that. If if you are if you are writing a, for example an HTML report or Markdown report, you could add add like the the legend or the figure or something like that, like citing the data source. I, I actually don't know if ggplot has something already in the ggplot object for that, but it's, it would actually be useful. Because actually, when you if you use the if if you get a ggplot object and use the the that money symbol to <laughs> look inside the the object, you mm -hmm. will see that there is the data. The data is a lot in the ggplot object. Yeah. I think you can store other data there. You could store other objects. I, I'm not sure. But, um, you mean then saving it. it as an RDS file? Yeah, if you if you want to modify the the the, the ggplot object, you, you could and, and add any attribute that you want. You can use the write RDS and the read RDS functions to to load it for a package. And actually you can, in your package, you can create your own functions that that wraps the RDS and already process the metadata on uh, on printing that on the, on the, on the on the text on the figure or if the person's run that on the console or terminal, it would print in the terminal a table or something. It's exactly something really useful if, if you don't know this already. <laughs> It's a good project. <laughs> I think documenting all these intermediate files, plots is, I don't know, sometimes it just becomes too much. And then at one point you don't but really bother doing it. And then by the end of your analysis, you forget um, like how you came into the end product. So I, I think you really have to be diligent from day one. That's it. There's no like smart solutions to it just have to well maybe there is a smarter solution that can make lo your life easier but it's not like it will be completely effortless i think the think yeah. r is, is... group has something about markdown and documentation but i'm, I'm gonna check that <laughs> done because I, I just once you mention that um yeah especially because Mikael is, is is talking a lot about the the workflow that starts as an analysis. So when, when you are running your analysis, you you pro, when you first approach it, most of the time you just say, "Oh, I'm just going to do that one time, and uh, yeah. I don't care how it's done." That's, that's true. But then you you see you doing that ten times in the next month, so <laughs> it's it's not the you, you, you don't start with the software um, design in mind. You, you just go doing data, but that, that's mostly addressed on the on that R Markdown development. You can mm -hmm. like add. You know, I, I read I, I read that, and actually I, I haven't tried to use, but using the or a vnet file or a Markdown any Markdown file, it's the perfect way to. Try to get your your data in your uh, code and the output, especially for figures, like you're saying, you can have already your figure with the all the documentation that you want on the markdown file, and then going from that to to the uh, to the uh, documentation to the package format, and then I think mostly that is what the RMD development dev dev first. Package is about. Yeah, that's what made me um, think think of that. So. Because I think you could put those our oxygen tags in the markdown file, and then you could just 
bring it over or something. Sure, you you could start chunking the the air oxygen already in the in the yeah. in the markdown file and then just separating yeah. them. Because that um, package I was showing you earlier that has a um, I can sh share my screen real quick. So it's let me. I gotta get back out of it, but let me go back to close. Let me pull up part of the. So when you're documenting, screw it. Sorry, I was freezing up there. Um, states. So we open this up. So this is my shiny file, but look, um, there's some documentation tags right in there. Never really, <laughs> if you notice like the description, a shiny module, and that's already put in for you from the Golem package. <laughs> So your import supplier, import. I think I added the import supplier um, and then import. I added some of those uh, myself. So you just put it in the R file, uh, some of those tags and it will generate, um, let's see, it's in my, I never really thought about it. Let's see. Nah. No, I don't think it does. But at least it's kind of, you already have like a framework. It doesn't look like it's doing it. I don't know if I'm doing anything wrong, but uh, it just made me curious. I just kind of remembered that from the Shiny app, but that's and just this a file problem. is in your R folder, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we should. Oh, actually, you have the no RD tag on that object. The no oh, RD tag. I see, I see, I see. Don't, don't create the, the RD file, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but you could. <laughs> yeah, you, you can just, ah, just remove the no RD file. <laughs> no RD tag. <laughs> but you kind of have the structure a little bit. You know, you can just put that in a regular R file and then um, when you're working on it, then just make it. Um, if you had to. Yeah, nice. Actually, um, now that you, you, you are showing that, I remember a package. I, I was trying to remember, actually, there is a package called Sinu, Sinu that automatically creates an R oxygen tag for, for, a, for a, an object that you created. I, I need to... I have seen that. Actually, it's a kind of old package, but I don't. I don't know if where there's a long time that I saw that. See, no. That you can, for example, write a function or, like your case, the the model, and and it it will at least like get the parameter names, the name of the function, the name of the things, and already. It's, what, it, it's probably it, if you're following this like um, R markdown development, it would be easier to just create the tags on the. Uh, okay, oh, sorry, uh, it would be easier to just create the, the tags while you are, you are coding. You could add a, um, a hot key or something. I will yeah. put that on the chat. Oh, actually, the the author of the package is Yoni CD. That is the one that presented the GitHub Actions for the the first cohort of the book. It's a is the developer of the package. I send that to him. 
Yeah, it, yeah, it's, it's, it, yeah, it do, it, it do exactly that. It creates an, um, an R oxygen skeleton populated with the functions that you created. Yeah, and, and it's actually in the in the it's saying that it it works for our Markdown files also. Cool. I'm not exactly sure how, but it it's saying <laughs> that it does. That. <laughs> you put that in the chat. Yeah, it's this Sino Sino package, and actually it has some oh. addings that you you can use inside our studio. Oh, cool. It's the last thing that I that I sent in the chat. So, there is this vignette about the things also. Actually, there is a, a YouTube video about using that. It's it's kind of cool. It, it actually is open like a shine shine package inside our studio, and you say which tags you want for oh. which our oxygen tags you want. It's, I wow, it is very well that. documented. I, I haven't actually tried that, but uh, I, sh I, I remember seeing that somewhere in the wild. <laughs> this looks awesome. I will send also the, the, there is a YouTube video about how to use it. <laughs> I think it would be really useful, especially if you already have your functions, if you already have like they are in DeFi with you, just want to add the documentation after that. It will, I, I don't know if it works for data, for example, but if it works for data, it would be also nice. I needed that yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And apparently he has another a package that can generally cre uh, create the summary readme markdown file of your um, test. You know what? I've been looking for that. Here, I can give you like the example yeah. output. It's amazing. Oh yeah, yeah. He he actually showed that showed that in the in the last cohort GitHub Actions like last uh, uh, presentation that 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 he uses GitHub Actions to automatically generate this cover page for the package. It's it's pretty cool. It's that definitely useful. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, actually, I don't know if it's in CRAN. I think it's not. Um, 
Yeah, it, it, it looks like this cover page ha haven't been submitted to Chrome yet. But... Nice. Yeah, actually, Unisit has a lot of nice packages. Uh, I'm seeing his GitHub. Profile. Yes, no, yeah, no, I'm scrolling through the GitHub repo. It's amazing. Yeah, there is a. It should a lot of interesting stuff. Nice. I always come away with new fun things to try. After <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially with, with data. I need, I need to, to have some breaks with adding data to packages. If there, there are two things that I, I really need to, to test is adding data and actually using and shine models to, to describe functions. I, I really need to, to get experience with that. Pretty cool.
Oh well, now it's apparently already five past. Okay. And it seems like many of us are now looking at Yoni CD Sweepo. Well, at least I am. Yeah, I usually have some time on, the, <laughs> on that subject. Yeah, many interesting stuff. I also like um, his uh, glossary package. So the idea is you, it can make a YAML file containing the description of, well, any glossaries, any terms that you have. And I think that can be extended to um, names for plots or anything. So I think I definitely can use that idea to document my analysis. Nice. All right then. Well, so I, I need to go. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Had my time also. <laughs> yeah. I heard some more things from Colin as well. It's, it's an ambitious undertaking. <laughs> Okay then. Well, see you next week. Bye-bye. Okay. See you guys see you next week.